So the construction of the building, it's a reinforced concrete frame, uh, interior plasterboard walls. So load bearing is an issue. Uh, if you're thinking about putting heavy items like mirrors or um, TV brackets, you need to find out where the supporting studs are uh, behind. You get a stud detector in a hardware store that will help you with that. Um, because it's plasterboard as well, so much moisture uh, in the um, building process, uh, there's a drying out period of 12 months. So we recommend not to do any decorating, wallpapering, or uh, especially wallpapering, but also paint. Um, just leave it for um, the first year and then you can wallpaper it or paint it. Um, but if you start wallpapering, you could be trapping the mo moisture behind the, the paper um, that's um, trying to get out. Uh, ventilation will help. Uh, you've got a ventilation system here with the vent above your head. Uh, and there's ones in each room. It takes the moisture from the um, bathroom and the kitchen, it takes the dust out, and it brings fresh air into the living areas. Um, so we'll talk a bit more about that later on. Um, behind the wall, you're going to have electrical wires behind the, uh, wherever there are sockets. So here, general rule of thumb is about hands width either side, try and avoid anywhere with a socket. Um, but the best thing to do would be get a, a cable detector. Um, you put it along the wall and it makes a little beep or a signal where there's a cable um, behind the plaster. You've got electric heaters on the wall. Turn them on here, but also um, there's a little button at the side. Um, and then you just control it here, up and down, volu um, volume, uh, for the instant there, um, temperature. Uh, you can also download the app, the ADAX app, and you can control it with that. Um, I think it uses Bluetooth. so. Um, and then turn it off here when not in use. The windows, very simple, you just have a key, push it in, and then you open and you can lock it as well, like that. There's a restrictor on here, obviously, um, because you don't want people jumping or falling to deaths. Uh, toughened glass as well, so should have no problems there. Uh, the inside windows you'd have to clean yourself, but obviously the outside inaccessible windows, the management companies then have to clean them uh, once a quarter. Um, so that's the windows. Uh, what else have we got? So, um, you may find a bit of shrinkage around skirting boards uh, where the plasterboard panels meet above door frames. Do you know the shrinkage? It's like the hairline cracks that may appear. Uh, maybe some here. Um, the tolerance levels are three millimeters, so it's the width of a pound coin. If you find any cracks where you could fit a pound coin into, that's uh, then a defect, and you can report that to FEC within the first two years. Uh, and it's also covered for the subsequent eight years under your NHPC warranty. So you've got 10 years coverage for structural issues like that. Um, anything else, if you see that the cracks are around, we recommend just leave them until the drying out period is over. That's about 12 months. And then you can usually just paint, uh, paint over them or maybe put a bit of filler uh, and um, cover them over that way. Um, but mostly the shrinkage you find in developments like this are cosmetic, they're not structural. And as I say, anything above three millimeters, the developer will deal with. You've got a TV point here. You've also got an internet point here. So you would connect your router to the wall in the utility cupboard, uh, a wire through an ethernet cable, and then you can run an ethernet cable out here to hardware device, um, often gaming consoles, if you want a more consistent stream, anything like that. Um, then you can get a hard, um, hardwired um, device out this way. Above your head, energy efficient uh, um, pendulum light bulbs there, just bayonet caps, very simple. Um, I'm obliged to say that people should dispose of them responsibly when they um, uh, stop working, um, but they're very easy to replace. Um, you've got a smoke alarm in here, I would recommend you test that once a week, or well, try and test it regularly, we recommend once a week. You just press the middle button, it'll make an alarm, and then you press it again to stop it. Um, it's hardwired onto the electricity, but there's also a battery backup, and we recommend that once a year you change the battery. It's a nine volt battery, um, just to stop it going off in the middle of the night beeping. Um, uh, and then also, just around the edges, we recommend that you, um, uh, when you do your household cleaning, just run a hoover around the edge so the dust doesn't accumulate. Um, because dust can set them off, but more importantly, dust can actually uh, stop them from going off if they're too dusty uh, in the event of a fire. Um, the sprinklers, there's uh, around the apartment, and uh, they're all individual to each other and completely separate from the smoke alarm system. Uh, basically, there's a seal inside each sprinkler, and when the temperature reaches a sufficient level, it will um, break the seal, and this will pop down and sprinkle water in the, the local area here. Um, they won't go off if you're drying your hair or anything like that, so, um, uh, contrary to urban myth. Um, but we do recommend that you don't paint over them. If you're painting, make sure you try to not let the paint get between the sprinkler and the ceiling, because it can actually act as a bit of a glue. And don't paint over them because you're adding another level of insulation and so that would require a higher temperature than to 
to set them off. As I say, this is meant to bring air in. And in the bathroom, we'll go in here, when you turn on the light switch, you're boosting the ventilation system. Uh, so that's uh, going to help get rid of the moisture from the bathroom. We recommend when you have a bathroom shower to close the door uh, behind you, and then when you come out, close it again. Uh, the boost will operate on a there's a humidity sensor in there, so when the uh, detects that there's not much humidity in the room, it'll then revert down to trickle mode. Um, we recommend you leave the system on all the time as well, especially within the first year for the drying out period, but it's just helping remove dust and moisture from, this, from the air. Um, inside the bathroom, we have some more things to talk about. We've got a towel rail behind the door here. Um, it's electric, so you just turn it on here, uh, and you can turn it on and off with this button here on the right. You can control the temperature, here up and down in five degree increments uh, and then you can also have little programs sorry stop, stop flashing program one is two hours program two is four hours over a 24 hour period and then if you do program three you can buy a remote control for these if you so wish and you can control um, schedules with with that but i haven't actually seen the remote control to um, talk about that um, most people don't bother it's just a Take the towel once in a while. We recommend you don't leave them on uh, a lot because they do guzzle a lot of energy. So just get them, put them on for half an hour before you want a hot uh, towel or to dry your towel at the end, and then just turn them off when you see them. You see them on. Um, right, toilet. We've got a long and short flush. This also doubles up as an access panel, so they can do some basic plumbing by just removing this panel, um, and that will prevent them having to break through the tiles to do it. Obviously, if the job is bigger, they may need to get through the tiles, but this allows them to do some basic jobs here. Underneath, you've also got access to the plumbing here, which is handy. It's a push-down uh, sink plug, push-down to close, push-down to open. Overflow is here. Left is hot, right is cold. Otherwise, it's pretty standard. You've got a shaving point here, which you can also use for toothbrushes, but we recommend if you use it for toothbrushes, charge up your toothbrush and then unplug it. If you leave them constantly plugged in for days and weeks, they can overheat and actually cause melting in the mechanism. So just plug them out once you've charged up your toothbrush. And then you've got loads of storage space in here, which is very handy. Nowadays, people have lots of different you know, cosmetic products and cleaning products, etc. So. Um, right, the little panel here, the glass, it will make contact with the sink if it's opened up uh, too far. And it might make an annoying clanking noise. It's tough and glass, so it shouldn't break unless you have to really hammer it. Um, but we recommend maybe get a bit of uh, silicone or something here just to stop the, the clanking noise, you know, because it can be quite annoying. Um, with the tiles here, we recommend you don't use uh, a brace of cleaning products, products with high bleach content. Um, just hot, soapy water, 95% hot water, 5% soap. Uh, we reckon it's sufficient. Maybe a bit of sif for some stains. And maybe some bicolor for the chrome if you see lime scale on, on that. Around the edge of the bath you've got a silicone seal. The more often you dry off the bath after use, um, including showers, the longer that seal is going to look um, pristine. But over the a period of years you may find that it might start to crack, you might get some uh, mold in there. If that happens it's easy to remove it, some of it will probably come off by hand. Um, you can get a little standing blade or something to remove the rest. And then when you want to apply the new silicone, we recommend you fill the bath with water before you apply the new silicone, um, because that then replicates the, the weight of someone having a bath. If not, if you, do, if you put this new silicone on when the bath is empty, then the first time you have a bath, it may crack the silicone. So um, that's, a, that's a job you could do yourself if you want to, but just be aware of that. Um, yeah, and underneath the access panels here, they can just take the silicone out and get in there. Uh, and there's a restriction of 38 degrees on the uh, water um, for building regulations. So I think, oh yes, down lights above your head, uh, quite easy to replace if and when they ever eventually stop working. You can just uh, put a little butter knife in um, the side of the plastic, pop it down, make sure you turn the lights off first, uh, and then basically there's a clip on either side and it just, it just pops out. You unscrew the bulb, there's a code on it, so you can get a new one, put that in, and then you push the clips together, pop it back in, and then the clips hold it in place. So, and that again, is, as I say, is extracting up here. So I think that's everything in the bathroom. Uh, yeah. As we go through then, this is the living room. Obviously you've got more windows here. Again, the same as the bedroom ones. Just a little key to 
you push it in to lock it and push it in to unlock it. Um, no balcony here, so there's nothing about the balcony. Another heater on the wall here. Um, you've got a TV point here as well, so you can have preview television. Um, you can contact a satellite um, provider for satellite television. They can install it here. There's no dishes, it's all done by fiber optics. And you can also access F FM DAB radio if you're into that retro stuff. And then another Ethernet port here as well. I believe this is future proof for telephones, um, but uh, they, there are no telephone connections here for landlines at the moment uh, in here. Um, but you can contact BT and they can set that up for you. Uh, what else so we get another small one here, another vent, and more down lights. Let's go to the um, second bathroom. Again, when you turn this on, any one of these switches or the boost switch over by the um, kitchen appliances will um, just push the mechanism, the, the device in here onto the, let's quickly show you that. So this is it, it's called the MVHR, Mechanical Ventilation Heat Recovery Unit. Um, it basically takes a bit of air from the outside, fresh air. In the winter, it will gently warm it to room temperature. It's not a heater. It's also not an air conditioner. It just, it, it takes out the dust with these filters here, and I'll show you them in a little while. Um, but any time you turn the lights on in either bathroom, as I say, you're boosting it onto the next level. And when you turn, turn them off, it'll run on until the moisture's gone, and then go down to trickle level. Um, in the bathroom, everything else in here is exactly the same uh, spec as the other bathroom, except the um, drain down here. So basically, if you want to clear, clear that out, it's got hairs or anything clogged up, you can just get a little screwdriver in the side on the left, flick it up, and then you can take out that um, little panel and um, aluminium thing and uh, clear out whatever's in there and put it back. It just rests on four little rests. So that's this. Everything else in this room, as I said, is, is the same. Vibrating here. Thank you. Right. So in the utility cupboard, we can go in the next section. Light switches on the right here, and then there's a little hook uh, lock up here. So going left to right, first of all, you've got your um, two options for the internet. This uh, fourth utility where you can be online within minutes. You just contact them, set up an account, and uh, they can they can have you online straight away. Or with the Open Reach uh, hub here you would need to contact them and they need to send you a router and then you would attach this to your router. With that, that router or this router, you can then send uh, ethernet cables out of here into these three ports and they are for the two bedrooms in the living room, um, but they're not labeled, so you'd have to use trial and error to see which one is which. Maybe uh, use the device without having connected to the Wi-Fi first and then you can decide, find out which one is which. You could then put right on the labels there what room is what if you wanted to. Um, Otherwise, it will provide they'll provide Wi-Fi for the room, just you know wirelessly. But if you want, as I say, hardwired, you can do that. Um, tele television here, three cables. You don't need to do anything with that. Um, right, consumer unit for your electricity. This is quite an important bit. So it's been tested in April. Doesn't need to be tested again until April two thousand and thirty-one by an electrician. But there are six um, tests you need to do here at home every six months. Press the T or test button that's under here. So this blue switch here, and this blue switch here, press that, press that, and that turns off all the power to your um, apartment. If these switches don't flick down, there's a problem. So you need to call an electrician. 99 times out of 100, or maybe even 999 times out of 1,000, they will. Um, and then all you do is, as I say, you just see me do there, restore the power by flicking the back up again. Your main trip switch is here, so you can turn off all the power to the apartment by just flicking this down, if you ever need to do that. And then occasionally you might find uh, that an appliance has caused a fault. You'd be using maybe a hair dryer or a heater or something, and the power will go out in an area. And you come in here, you'll see that's probably flicked down. Or if it's upstairs, or not upstairs, um, in the kitchen area, it might be this one. So you unplug the faulty appliance, or the one you suspect to be causing the problem, and you restore the power like this. If it continues to come down, then the appliance you think is causing the problem isn't the problem. You need to then go through all your other appliances uh, and check which one is causing the um, problem. So you'd switch them off at the walls, uh, push this back up, and then switch them on one at a time, and then the one that's causing the problem will generally cause this default again, and then you've identified the problem. If you can't identify the problem doing that, you then need to call an electrician. Um, but that's really everything you need to do with, with this. Um, your washing machine is here. All the appliances come with two-year um, warranties. You need to go onto the Spaceable portal to um, uh, register them. 
Uh, they're all basically um, Bosch, apart from the cooker hood, which is Elica. Um, so you might be able to do it in one go. Um, I haven't actually gone through the process myself because I don't have an apartment. Um, but you, you need to register them all. Two years um, coverage uh, gives you good peace of mind. If they break down in the first two years, you don't have to buy a new one. Um, they all come with instruction manuals, but the basic operation is this. You turn it on here, and then you can just use the wheel here to choose your function. You can change temperature, uh, spin cycle, and some other little features. This is a sticker, you need to peel this off. And then when the door is fully closed, you press this to start, and then turn it off here. If it ever causes a leak, there's a blue valve at the back here. If you, I don't know if you can see that. That's running in line with the pipe now, so it's flowing, but if you need to turn it off, you turn it 90 degrees, and that cuts off the water to the washing machine. And then to restore it, you turn it back like this. You may occasionally find that inside the drum, you get water um, pooling, water not coming out, and it's often uh, in here at the side, at the bottom. There's a little uh, thing you can take out here. So basically what you do is, if, the, if, there's, if there's, you find water is in here that's not coming out after the cycle, put a, a towel down on the ground and maybe a little basin of water because some water will come out. Not tremendous amounts of water, but enough to cause a, a, a bit of a pool of, of water here. So you open it gently, incrementally, just let a bit of water come out, close it, keep doing that until you've dealt with all the water that's gonna come out. And then when you do this and no more water comes out, then it's safe to open it out fully. You pull it out and you might find that a sock or something has gone in there and caused a bit of a blockage. Um, and then maybe lint is gathered up behind it, etc. So you give that a clean, put it back in, and then that usually solves a lot of problems. Um, and if it doesn't, you've got your two years uh, coverage. So put this back here. So, as I said earlier about the uh, MVHR, the switches on the wall here, where is it? Here. We recommend you leave this on all the time. It's just, you know, sort of filtering the air. You've got to clean the filters every so often. And these can be tricky to go open. It wasn't too bad. So you take out this filter. That's a bit... They always put it in the wrong way. Yeah, it's getting a bit dirty, as you can see. So you can run that under a tap um, and then leave it to dry. I would say turn it off at the wall. Uh, give it a little wash under the tap, leave it to dry overnight, and then put it back in. But I say put it back in with this little handle facing outwards, so that it's easier to remove the next time. And then you can just grab this and pull it out, so I haven't to do what I did. And then you close it here. And then obviously there's one on this side as well, you do both of them. A little light will appear if um, the, filter, the filters get too dirty, that's what's happening here. I think you can... Apparently you're supposed to be able to turn off pressing that button, but maybe we just need to clean them. Um, you need to get this serviced every two years. Um, uh, it's covered for it's covered under the warranty, but if you don't get the service, the warranty is invalid. So um, yeah, and as I say, it gets boosted with the switches uh, outside the bathrooms and it's one of the kitchen for when you're cooking. Um, you've got your hot water tank here. So basically it's set up uh, to create hot water at certain times of the day. Um, if you find you're not getting enough hot water, or like you're running out of hot water, maybe you've got a household where people like to have baths instead of showers, you can boost it here. So you turn on this, this is the hot water, so this should be on, and then the boost uh, switch is here. And you press this for a half an hour boost, a one hour boost, or a two hour boost, and when you press it a fourth time, it turns it off again, so it's just back to regular mode. This needs to be serviced every year. Um, just to make sure it's operating correctly and to keep your warranties in place. Um, right, what else have we got? I think that's it over here. And then your water meter is here. Uh, a reading has been taken and they can be read remotely from that point onwards, so you don't need to take physical readings. Your isolation valve for your uh, water in the apartment is here. So if there's ever a leak you can identify, you just turn this tap all the way in. Uh, help maybe turn a tap on in one of the rooms and then when it stops running, you know you've turned off all the water and then to turn it back on again, just open it out anti-clockwise fully. If you're leaving the apartment for more than 24 hours, we recommend you close off the water just in case there's a leak while you're away. Um, but if there was and you hadn't done that, there is another valve outside the apartment, just in the ceiling, where the management company can get in and turn off if necessary. Um, I think that's everything in this utility cupboard. 
and this little lock up here, so we close this door first. So uh, your entry system is here. Turn it on here. Oh, it's Austin's create password. So I'm not going to mess around with that because somebody uh, has to create a password. Once you've created the password, there'll be it's it's a pretty um, user friendly interface. Uh, when someone tries to um, come to the apartment, they'll buzz the number and then there'll be a little icon. You'll see them on the screen and then you can let them in by pressing the relevant button, the green button. Um, there's also uh, some settings. There's like a cog that will be on there, and once you press the cog button, you can see uh, other settings. The most important one there would be the do not disturb function. So you scroll down to do not disturb and then you can set it for uh, all day or you can set a time that you don't want to be disturbed until and then people can't buzz you. So if you have had a busy week at work and you just want Saturday and Sunday to not be disturbed by anybody, you can set it so that it doesn't ring. Um, and you can also view the outside by pressing a certain button as well. I think it's a second button along and then you can see view the concierge or view the love gate head entrance. Um, but without setting the password, I can't really go through the functionality completely. But it is pretty straightforward, and the main purpose is to let people in and out of the building. Uh, the front door gives you 30 minutes fire protection. There's a few other things to be said about fire. Um, where people are advised not to drill between one room to the other. Um, I don't know what reason you want to do that for, but you're advised not to. Um, you're advised not to store large amounts of combustible materials. Um, and with uh, if you get a fire in here. We recommend you have a smoke, um, a fire extinguisher and a fire blanket for dealing with small little blazes in the kitchen. Uh, throw the fire blanket over if it's a chip pan fire or something. Use a fire extinguisher if there's a fire somewhere else. But if it starts to get out of control, you're advised to vacate the property, lock the door behind you, and contact the emergency, emergency services as quickly as possible. If you hear the alarms going off in the hallway, uh, there isn't a stay put policy here as such. You are advised to use your own judgment. Um, you can look out your people here and you should be able to see that there's no fire directly outside your door. Uh, in which case you can, if you feel uh, you want to try to do this, go to the fire escape. Use the stairs, not the lift. The lifts will probably become inoperable in the event of fire. Um, so just use the fire escape instead. Um, and there is more information on fire safety in the um, space of the portal as well. Um, yeah, also this little chain on, on, on here is a very basic way to stop someone from wanting to come into your apartment. It won't keep out a determined person, obviously, because it's just a little chain. Um, you do have security where you can push this lock in and turn it to lock. Uh, just to, that is a reminder that when you come into the apartment, it will be unlocked, which is very useful if you're just stepping outside to talk to a neighbour or something, and if the door closes behind you, you don't need to call a lock to get back into your apartment. But just for security reasons, it will be unlocked when you come in afterwards. So you need to lock it yourself manually using this. Um, and with this keychain here, I just recommend that when not in use, you hook it up here because they can swing between the door and the frame and cause a little bit of damage. Um, otherwise, I think it's pretty much everything with the front door. It's relatively straightforward. Uh, kitchen appliances. All the uh, manuals for the kitchen appliances are on the space of the portal. Um, some little things to know about them. The fridge and freezer. Uh, at the back of the fridge here, the little hole, and that's where the ventilation uh, circulation of the little droplets you see here, they will eventually melt and go down in here, they'll go through, they'll come back and then they will melt again and it just keeps it cold that way. But if this is blocked up by food debris that um, inhibits that process and so you'll start to have water pooling here, it'll start to drain, trickle down here into this tray. Uh, and then you might get ice developing. So basically, just every once in a while, make sure that's not clogged up with any debris. Use a little cocktail stick or something like that, Q-tip, to make sure it's able to circulate. Up here, you've got some controls. I wanna open the door a bit more there. Can I get in here? Um, basically, you can control the temperature of the interior of the fridge by using this button here. You scroll through from eight being the least cold to two degrees being the coldest. Uh, I'll put it on the middle. How cold you want, it depends on how cold you like things and also how much is in the fridge and what time of year it is. Because some people say, well, should I have it on? That's all down to you, really. Um, there's also a super function here. So if you're getting a large amount of frozen goods, you can press this button here, a little orange light will appear, and that will boost your freezer for 52 hours. So it will get all those frozen goods um, frozen more quickly. And then after that, it'll just revert back to uh, normal mode. Let's turn that off there.
Also, a little thing to know is there's no handles on these, so you tend to open the freezer this way, but just be aware that this plastic uh, door, it gets closer to the wooden panel as you open it. So if your finger is down here are too low, and you open it quickly, it, uh, injure, it could injure your finger. So make sure you grab it from the top and don't let your fingers get down too, too low there. Because it happened to me in the first week of the job and I had a black finger now. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, loads of storage space here. And they're all soft clothes as well, which is nice, no slamming. And here you've got your dishwasher. All the spur switches are on the wall here, they're all on at the moment. You turn on your dishwasher here. Uh, you can just scroll through the functions using the program button here. Uh, 65 being the most intense. Uh, and you go all the way down to just a rinse. Uh, there's an eco one as well, which takes a lot longer, but it uses less energy. Um, there's also a delay. You can do a three or six or nine hour delay. So you basically could be loading up the dishwasher throughout the day. And then as long as the door is closed at the relevant time, it will then operate. You put your dishwasher tabs in here, and then you close the door. Put your rinse aid in here. Down here, that little looks like a petrol cap. You put dishwasher salt in there, that prolongs the life of the dishwasher. And then this one here, you can unscrew this as well and take this out to filter. So sometimes that might get a bit dirty, it might need a bit of cleaning. You just unscrew this here and take that out. You can also take out this tray if you want to do larger items and put this little attachment on the back and that will spray out as well at the back and allow you to put larger items in there. And then you'll get little uh, lights on here if uh, certain things aren't happening. So if there's no water, this light will come on. If there's no uh, dishwasher salt, that light will come on. And if there's no rinse aid, this light will come on. Rinse aid is optional, to be honest with you. It's not essential to the operation of the dishwasher. It just gets things more sparkling and clean, apparently. I've never bought it myself, never had a dishwasher. Um, salt is important though, salt prolongs the life of the dishwasher. Um, and then the start button is here. Sometimes you might need to hold this for three seconds if you find you can't scroll through the functions. So you hold this for three seconds and then turn it off and on again and that should um, clear up any problem. So we'll turn this off here. Now, if you find a problem with the dishwasher where there's the leak, there is an uh, isolation valve under here, that blue valve. Uh, identical system to the dish uh, wash machine, you just turn it 90 degrees and that will cut off water and then you turn it back so it's in line with the pipe and that will allow water to go through. And there's also the plug there for the dishwasher is underneath there. Uh, there's not really much to say about the sink. Uh, it's pretty standard, just tap here and then hot the left hole on the right. Um, your work surface is silo stone. Um, when it comes to taking hot items off of the hob, uh, you need some sort of heat mat or a piece of wood or something to prevent um, discoloration over, peer, over time of the work surface. We also recommend you don't cut on it directly so you get a chopping board. And also if you see any wet um, patches or splashes, try and dry them up as, as quickly as possible. I don't really know what physical effect that would have on this, um, but we are advised some people don't let it get soaking wet. So, um, as I say, all the spur switches are on the walls here. They're not labeled, so you have to kind of figure out which one is which. This is your hob. So you turn it on here, hold this button, and it's an induction hob, so if you don't have induction pans, nothing's gonna happen. There are special induction pans that use electromagnetism, um, but each one of these zeros is re related to these four um, hobs here. So let's choose this one, for example. So that would be that one. You can choose the temperature by pressing the plus button it starts off at nine. You can go up to boost, which gets it hot quickly, or you can then scroll down all the way through to zero. You hold it, it'll hold, and it'll go down to one. And then you need to press it one more time to go to zero. Once you've selected this, right, let's just put it on nine for a sec. And then you can also choose timers. So you press this clock icon, and then by just pressing the plus and the minus you can set 30 minute cooking time then after 30 minutes it'll stop cooking or when it's next to that little bell that will be an alarm so you choose a time for an alarm to sound so the alarm would sound and it would continue to cook after that point and then to get rid of those alarms etc you can just bring it down using the minus button again and you got to press it one more time when it gets to zero Bit of a bit of time to get down. 
from last time here. There's also a lock function, you hold this key for five seconds. And then that prevents anybody from accidentally or purposely changing what you've done. Um, children, for example. And then you hold it for five seconds again. And that um, clears it. And then to turn it off, press this button here. There's also a boost function, so you can just go on to 9, press this boost button, or if you're on a lower setting, you can just press the boost and it'll uh, boost it. Um, here you've got your cooker hood, so the little panel here comes out. Um, you can put these in the dishwasher, but they may be subject to discoloration, so we recommend you wash them in a plastic basin in the sink with hot water and soap or fairy liquid or something. Um, uh, if grease starts to build up on these, it can be very difficult to get rid of. Grease kind of comes uh, exponentially. If you let it get a bit greasy, it gets greasier and greasier and greasier. So if it gets too greasy, it can become a fire hazard. Um, so we recommend you keep them clean. Uh, clean them maybe once every two months or something, it should be okay. Underneath here, you've got your extracting cooker hood. So it's taking it out onto the outside. It's not a recirculating one as some models are. So you don't need charcoal filters. It just extracts it into the outside. And to put this back, there's two little bits here which slot into the holes. You push this up and release it, and that holds it in place. Um, your oven, so basically, when you first turn it on, you need to uh, do the, the time is at 11.41. Um, okay, so this, you change the time to 11.41. You need to set the time before you can cook with it as well. So. And then you just press that. Now you can also uh, say pick one of the functions here and you can then select a alarm, 10 minutes, so for 10 minutes an alarm will go. Let's bring this down to zero. You can set a cook uh, cooking time, so 30 minutes and we'll cook for 30 minutes and then turn off. And uh, you can set a cook to time, right? Sorry. When it's up the line here, so you can say cook to 2.30, which will mean it will come on 30 minutes before um, 2.30. So if you wanted to prepare food earlier on, put it in the oven, you can use that setting and then it will come on later on if you're doing other things, you know? But let's clear all these. Now, can you get that smell from the oven? Yeah. So we recommend you do a burn off when you first use the oven. Okay, that's, that's all correct. So we recommend you put it on this, which is the full fan, and put it on full temperature for about an hour, and that will burn off any residual chemicals from the factory. Uh, straight away you start to smell it. Um, these functions here, this is the light, this is uh, grill and fan. This is the grill, this is a gentle fan, and this is the full fan. And this is off again. And then this on the right is just uh, simply for temperature. And again, Bosch uh, needs to register as you do with all the appliances. This little corner uh, cover is quite cool. Sometimes these ones aren't, uh, you can't open them up like that, and you've got to kind of reach around the back to get your, your things. But this one opens up very intuitively, or intuitively. And also, there's a uh, cooker hood switches here. Uh, and it's that. And also behind here you've got some space for spices and stuff, um, obviously because the cooker would be here they couldn't use it as a full um, cupboard so they've tried to save a bit of space, um, usable space by putting in some little racks there. Um, okay, uh, what else have we got here? That's most of the appliances. And then above your head you've got another sprinkler uh, and I believe this is a heat alarm. Now, it, I could be wrong, I think it's a heat alarm as opposed to a smoke alarm. Meaning that if you burn uh, toast, it won't set it off, it's just a um, uh, temperature. Um, but if someone you know, is smoking in here and it goes off, then I'll be proven to be wrong about that. But I believe it's easy now, as opposed to smoking now. Um, as I say, 10 years coverage between FEC and NHBC for um, structural issues or anything you know, that should be dealt with under the um, uh, agreement. Um, also, the building insurance is covered by Zenith Management, um, but home contents insurance you need to sort out yourself. Um, uh, I think that's pretty much everything else in here. The flooring, by the way, the flooring is, is laminate flooring, 
so you can get it as wet as you like really, but I would say avoid getting it too wet around the edges for the skirting boards. If water gets in the sides there, it can cause some, some problems. Um, but here, middle of the floor, it's really no problem. Although we don't recommend you get them soaking wet. The moist um, mop should do the trick. Um, cleaning uh, soapy water, really. Uh, and that's that, really. I think that's pretty much everything.